what we will discuss next is uh, how do we actually compile these uh, arithmetic circuits. And there will be two portions to this discussion. Uh, the first is mostly for uh, theoretical interest. Uh, we will show how in the first part, for example, you can run variable elimination in a certain way and have the side effect of variable elimination be an arithmetic circuit. Right? So you'll see in a second. We will also show you how if you have built a joint tree of the graphical model, how to extract from it an arithmetic circuit as well. In both cases, the guarantee is that the arithmetic circuit would be would have the usual guarantee linear in the number of variables exponential in the tree width this is only to show that you cannot do worse with this approach than the previous approaches one second to give more insights into how they relate but that's not interesting because that's not what we want we want to beat the tree width barrier we want to do better when tree width is high and then that's the second part of what we're going to get. The second part that we care about and the one that gives you state-of-the-art results and the one that's implemented in A's, that one also has part, two parts, A and B. Um, the part A that we'll cover today is the fundamental notion behind it, and the part B is the utilization of a logic box, and that we will do um, later. All right, let's move on. First is how do we... Uh, compile using variable elimination, straightforward, right? Here's a network that has two variables, A, B, and here's the uh, CPTs for that. Look what we're going to do. Uh, think of this as a symbolic version of variable elimination. Uh, I'm going to replace the numbers in the CPTs by the following expressions, or think of them as uh, circuit fragments, right? So what did we do here? If you look at the CPT for A, when A was true, I just put the theta sub A, the, the symbolic variable that represents that parameter and the indicator for that value, and similarly here, right? What did I do here? Uh, for this row, uh, I just included the indicator for the, 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 the variable that corresponds to the CPT B. So true, false, that's this guy, that guy, and so on. And then I put the parameters that correspond to that particular row. Okay, now here we're being loose on notation. This literally should be B given A. And this should be not B given A and so on. But we're dropping the conditioning bar because there's no ambiguity. Is this clear so far? Straightforward, right? Every row, we put an indicator for the variable of that CPT together with the parameter for that row. Now, look what we're going to do. We're going to run variable elimination as we know it. Variable elimination, what does it do? It will end up, when it multiplies tables, it does multiplication on numbers. When it sums out, it does addition on numbers. I don't have numbers now. What do I have? What do I have? I have circuit nodes. Every one of these cells you want to think of it as a node in a circuit that's being constructed. So we're, we're doing it flatly here, but in reality, think of this as the node star with, with two children, theta and lambda, right? This is a multiplication node. So when I did this, I already on the side have constructed portions of a circuit with nodes. When I'm running variable elimination, when variable elimination is trying to multiply two things, what do I do? I go construct a node star in the new circuit and make it point to the two guys that it's trying to multiply. If a variable elimination tries to add two of these things, then I'm adding an addition node to the circuit. And you'll see by the time that variable elimination finished, it would have constructed the arithmetic circuit for you. All right, let's see it in action. I'm going to do this. I'm going to eliminate B first. So when you do this, you eliminate all variables. I don't have evidence, nothing. I just do this to variable elimination. What do we do if I want to eliminate the variable B? I have to sum it out of this table, right? That's the only table that mentioned it. And um, 
that's this guy and that's the result of summing out B. Look what happened. Um, the, a, same value, so I added up these two rows and I added up these two rows. We're good? Again, it's being written as, as an algebraic expression, but in reality, this is now a portion of an arithmetic circuit. So I added addition nodes, and then I have to eliminate A. So I have to multiply this table by the original table for A and then sum out A, and that's pretty uh, simple. These are the two guys uh, originally from the network and the one that I just constructed. I multiply them, I get this. Um, now I, I have these two guys, and then finally I sum out A from that guy, which means add up these two, and um, I do that, and here you go. We just compiled a circuit using variable elimination, right? So um, that is pretty interesting, and this is basically the guy, and that is what's going on. Okay, as I said, this is of theoretical interest. Uh, that doesn't help me much because it gives me the same um, computational complexity. Now, you may still like this. You say, I want to do this actually instead of running variable elimination. I want to use variable elimination to do this, and I'm going to take the circuit, and that's a cleaner way of implementing an inference system instead of repeating variable elimination every uh, time. Now, there are variations, I have to say. You look in your book. You can take this version and make it better and, and do something better than variable elimination, but we're not going to do this now. Um, I want to do one more thing on the relation with joint trees uh, to close this theoretical connection and then do the last part, which will be short, by the way. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. The other way to get an arithmetic circuit with the tree with guarantee is almost directly from a joint tree. I'll sketch it for you here. Uh, the details in the book, but it's pretty simple. Uh, remember what a joint tree looks like. You have these clusters, correct? You have these separators, and there's some kind of a root. Okay, you get me a joint tree for the Bayesian network. Tell me the root is up there, and look what I'm going to do. I'm going to construct a circuit in an almost systematic way by going to clusters, so this is the cluster A, B. Let's say all variables are binary. How many instantiations? Four, correct? This guy is going to contribute multiplication nodes. And we're going to tag each multiplication node by the instantiation it corresponds to. So this is A, B true, da, da, A, B false, right? It's just straightforward. And now, since the root is that way, uh, this is the separator. Separators contribute addition nodes. This addition node, that addition node. Again. Uh, one for A one, uh, true, one for A false. And then I wire up the addition nodes from here to multiplication nodes in the obvious way, because this is A, it goes to the guys that have A true. This is A false, it goes to the guy that have A false. I don't want you to remember this. What I want you to visualize is if you give me a joint tree, I can go on the side and write an arithmetic circuit size, as you can see, is exponential in the clusters and separators, right? So it's going to be the tree with guarantee. Uh, the, the main point is that this can be done. <laughs> and the next slide, which is the, the more surprising part. Okay, but again, you probably don't want to do this um, computation in the sense that it, it does not give you a better complexity than the joint tree algorithm. It may be, give you a cleaner way of implementing things, but not better complexity. Remember when we talked about the second pass, the back propagation, differentiation, and I think there's method A, method B, method C in your book? Remember that? Okay. If you look in your book, you will find that those methods correspond to the Shano Schaefer and Yugen uh, architecture. Uh, remember, what, what you do in a joint tree is you have a root, you basically take the messages all the way to where the root, and then you push the messages back. You can think of that as evaluating and differentiating the underlying implicit uh, joint tree. Chenoy Schaefer, uh, can, you can do a one-to-one -one correspondence between what it's doing and evaluating and differentiating the underlying circuit using method A. 
and the Hugen architecture, you can do a one-to-one -one correspondence between what it's doing in its first and second passes and method B for differentiating circuits. Not, not a lot of implications for what we're going to do because, as I said, in reality, we're, gonna, we're not going to do this. We're going to do what I'm going to tell you next. Uh, this last part is the state-of-the-art method for uh, really getting these circuits. It is based on the notion of a reduction. If you know in computer science, a reduction is when someone has a box that does something. It says, I have a box, worked hard on it. It takes this kind of an input, generate that kind of an output for this problem X. And then someone else says, yeah, but I, ha I want to solve problem Y. It's not X, it's Y. And then you think about it and you say, wait a minute, maybe I can take Y and write it in a form where I can utilize the box for X. That's what's going to happen. Now, what is the box for X that we're going to use? Is some kind of a logic box that takes Boolean formula in one form and give you something else. We're going to mention it's very simple, but we're not going to talk about how it works. And what is problem Y that we care about? Given a Bayesian network, give me an arithmetic circuit. That represents, or that computes, the network polynomial of that Bayesian network. We're good? Okay. The reduction, if you want to understand it, if, if I want to, I can tell it to you literally, it's very simple. I will tell you, here's the Bayesian network, here's what you write out for a Boolean formula. On one slide, we can do it immediately, straightforward. But I want to give you the reason why it works. There's a fundamental reason behind it, which is pretty important. So we'll first, we'll do that. We'll do this observation uh, that makes this reduction work. And then I will show you the reduction, straightforward. And then I point to the box that we did not, we're not do today, but we'll do uh, later. OK, here's how the reduction works. What we really want to solve is this problem. I give you a multilinear function, or a polynomial, and I want an arithmetic circuit for it, correct? This is exponentially sized. This is the guy that I want to do the computation on. And actually, I don't give you this to you explicitly. I give you a Bayesian network whose polynomial is this. Good. That's what we're going to do. The box we're going to utilize is this. It's what we call a compiler or a knowledge compiler in, in logic. It takes a Boolean formula in Sienna form, that's conjunctive normal form, st standard form, and it gives you back a circuit, a Boolean circuit, uh, that is, uh, has this acronym. It stands for Deterministic Decomposable Negation Normal Form. We know about this. Simple. But Boolean circuit, that's what this box is. A Boolean circuit that corresponds to the CNF and have some properties. So the real reduction is this. You take the multilinear function and encode it as a CNF run the logic box to get a Boolean circuit, and then from it, extract the arithmetic circuit. These two steps are straightforward. Encode, compile, decode, right? You see, this one we'll see is straightforward, and this one also we will see today. All right, so we'll see this, we'll see that, but we will not talk about this guy. Once more, before I show you the encode, decode, I want to give you this, this basic concept to really see how could you do an encoding of a multilinear function of number, which is a real value thing in a, a symbolic way, right? You're probably thinking about this. On the one hand, I have uh, real numbers <coughs> and, and polynomials. The other, I have Boolean expression. Here it is. This is a multilinear function. Uh, a, B, C are real valued variables. And the claim is I can encode it using this propositional theory. Now I have the Boolean variables, big A, big B, big C, which could be true or false. Right? So note, on this side, big A, big B, Boolean variables, true or false. On that side, small a, small c, small, uh, small a, small b, small c, the real valued values. How does this guy, how does this guy encode that guy? So the claim, if I can give you this guy, and I tell you, it's just a propositional theory, what is the multilinear function it represents? You can recover that. Look how it works. Oh, man, that's not the slide. <laughs> okay. Here it is. <laughs> uh, this is a propositional theory. Three variables. How many variable instantiations? 
eight. Correct? Look at them. Eight instantiations. The, the interpretation is that each one of these instantiations represents a term over the real valued variables, small a, small b, small c. In what sense? A true means include the variable small a. A false means do not include it. So look at the first row. A, B, C are true, true, true. That means the real valued value A multiplied by B by C. What is the second guy? True, true, false. That means include A, include B, but do not include C. So on, on the real world, on the real valued side, that's the term A multiplied by B. You guys get it? Here, A multiplied by C. This guy is only A all the way. What is this last part? Just one. None of the variables are included. You guys see that? So the idea is each variable instantiation here represents a particular term. So far, so good? Now, this doesn't talk about this guy. You just talk about three variables, A, B, C. Now, when I give you the propositional theory, this, some of these eight are models of this. They satisfy it, and some do not. Correct? Which one do satisfy it? Are the one in yellow? In this case, three of them. So what does this say? This say this guy represents the addition of this this and that, which is this. Do we see what's going on? Every instantiation of Boolean variables can be thought of as a monomial. And when I give you a propositional theory, I'm, I'm telling you which one of them to select to add. That is the underlying concept for this phenomena. And that's why what I'm going to show you next works. Okay, now I can go to my previous slide. Uh, this is how the big picture works. I have the multilinear function. In, in general, this is going to be a Bayesian network embedding one of them. And then I, I get the propositional theory, CNF. I compile it into this Boolean circuit that has this name. And then I decode it to get the arithmetic circuit. The coding process is pretty simple. Uh, AND gates become multipliers. OR gates become adders. And any positive literal translate into the corresponding real valued variable and any negative literal transform into one. So this guy gives me that. And this ends up being the same as that. Right? So the decoding part is pretty straightforward. And now I'm going to tell you the encoding part. Right? Because remember, when we encode, I'm encoding from what? From a Bayesian network. I, I will never want to construct the polynomial directly. Um, Two more slides. We're, we're, I told you we're going home early today. Uh, we're going to have a Bayesian network, and you're going to write out a CNF from it, and you're going to compile this into another Boolean circuit, and you extract from it the arithmetic circuit. And by the way, the ACE system that I showed you results on uh, earlier, that's how it works. And it's available online if you guys want to try it out. Uh, there are actually multiple ways of doing this game, and, and ACE gives you that. So let's see it. Let's see the reduction. It's pretty nice, simple. We'll do it for the small Bayesian network, two variables, A and B, uh, Boolean variables. I have two indicators for A, correct? Two indicators for B. How many parameters for A? Two of them. And for this guy? Four. Here's how it looks. Remember when we did the connection, we had small a, big a. We're not going to do small and big here. So we're just going to have, uh, this is the real valued guys, and we're just going to have them the same appear in the Boolean uh, in the CNF. So this is the CNF. Uh, this is the Bayesian network. This is what we're trying to encode. Here's the encoding. It has two parts. Pretty simple. Look the first part. For every variable a, a, I write this for the indicators. What does that mean? I must have this or that. I can't have them both. Think of this as saying either A must be true or false. So this is for this guy. This guy, same thing for B. I need lambda B or lambda not B. I can't have them both. So the lambdas generate this kind of what we call indicator clauses. Simple, right? If, if A had three values, then it would be lambda this or that or that, right? The other thing we have is the other type of uh, logical statements, which are these. What is this saying? 
uh, it's tying the indicators and the parameters for a particular node. So if you look at A, it's saying lambda A if and only if theta A, lambda not A if and only if. Okay, maybe this is not as clear. Let's look at B. What is saying? Lambda A and lambda B, right, is if and only if that. Lambda A and lambda not B if and only if that. This is the instantiation of A and B that correspond to that parameter. That's it. This is it. If you take this CNF, you put the truth table, you look at the instantiations and do what we did, and select the ones that satisfy this, you get back this guy. And you can imagine how you can split this out easily by just traversing the Bayesian network, really, and, and generating these things. In a Bayesian network, you write a Boolean expression like this, you send it to a logic box, gives you a Boolean circuit, and then you do a little bit of replacement of things and say, here's the arithmetic circuit. Pretty nice. There's one missing link here. One or two more slides. You said, wait a minute. You told us when we started that the whole point here is, I'm going to show you how to break the three-width barrier. And we agreed that if you want to break the three-width barrier, you have to look into numbers. Where are you looking into numbers here? It's no looking into numbers. It's all symbolic, right? This is indifferent to the values of these things, correct? You're right. If you just do this, you're still not getting it. So let me give you a hint of how can you explain numbers. Very simple. Here it is. Remember our example here, right? It had both functional constraints and context-specific independence. So let's look at the functional constraints. Here's one of them. This guy, zero, means this is impossible. What I just described to you, what will it generate for the cell? It will generate this particular statement in logic, correct? Now, what does that mean? This guy is zero. I'm telling you, it's a zero. What does that mean? This will never happen. How do you do that? How do you handle it in our encoding? You get rid of this variable. You get rid of the statement. And what do you replace it with? You say, you take this guy and say the negation of this. You get this clause. You throw that away. And you end up putting this instead. I cannot have these guys all at the same time. What impact does that have on the encoding? It means all of these monomials, all of these monomials that contain this variable, what is going to happen to them? They're going to vanish. I don't want them. Why do I have them there only to substitute a zero and eliminate them? They're just going away. Now I took advantage of zero parameters. Good. I'll give you an example of how do you take advantage of context-specific independence. And these are just examples. There are variations and different ways you can do this. Your book discuss some of these. Here's the other phenomena. Uh, those two guys were equal, depending on uh, the E is irrelevant. So if A is true and B is true, these guys are irrelevant, and that's what they get, right? What do we do in this case? What we really know is what from this? That these two are? These two parameters are equal. That's what context-specific independence really translates to. How do I handle this? I merge these into one variable. And I do something that looks like this instead of two. And so on. You get to see it now. It makes sense at some level because look what's going on. Really, there is a polynomial, and I'm, what, what am I doing when I'm uh, moving it to a circuit? I'm factoring it, correct? You can imagine if I give you a, a polynomial and I say factor it. If I tell you, by the way, this variable and that variable happens to be the same, that will improve your ability to factor, correct? Or if I tell you some of these variables are zeros, that's what's going on here. 
it is amazing that it took again i think uh, when was a it, it took a, one to two decades to go from the time that context specific independence was identified to being able to exploit it effectively as i showed you by the 2008 um, empirical evaluation and it was this creature that actually uh, did that I think this is the last uh, slide. I remind you of the big uh, picture here. Let's let's look at it again in animation. Uh, the Asian network underneath it there is a polynomial or a network polynomial. I write out the CNF which encodes that polynomial. I compile the CNF into a Boolean circuit. I extract my arithmetic circuit. Now my inference is on this guy. One pass up to evaluate another pass to differentiate I give you all kind of marginals uh, what is missing is the box that takes from this to that uh, we will in this course we will not talk about the details of the box but I will tell you about this creature because what's going to happen is there's a whole bunch of boolean circuits that are going to be types that are very relevant to what we do now what we'll do when we do explanation of classifiers uh, at the end da, da, da. so we need to go over some of these and also some variations in arithmetic circuits um, so basically, that's uh, that's the plan that we will cover on uh, on Tuesday. We're done for today. Thank you. I'll see you uh, next week.